Listen, there's no question the two goals are lucky, but sometimes you have to work for your luck. Uh, and I think over the 90 minutes, uh, Arsenal were the better side. Uh, and so they, they worked for the luck. You know, when Hazard scored uh, and Chelsea went one up, I was worried for Arsenal because yeah. I thought Chelsea was so superior then. Uh, the Villian injury, Barkley coming on, who, who looked as though he hasn't played for a long time. Mm. I thought from then on, Arsenal were the better side. Uh, Chelsea had nothing. No. Nothing in the second half whatsoever. What's wrong with them? Nothing in the second half, nothing in the first half, nothing in the first leg. It's not only over the 90 minutes, it's over, over the 180 minutes that Arsenal were far better than Chelsea were. I look at a, at a Chelsea team right now that are simply just not very good. They're disconnected in between the lines. There doesn't seem to be a plan as to how they're going to play. Eden Hazard just kind of has a free role to go wherever he wants, and everybody is just kind of fitting the role according to whatever Hazard is doing. But the fact of the matter is that you don't have a lot of good players out there. Batshuayi, he's not the answer to whatever question you have. Obviously, the absence of Morata hurts. But then again, those that criticize Morata will say, well, he's not good enough. And then that's when Edin Dzeko perhaps becomes an option. All I'm saying is that as a whole, Chelsea are just kind of looking at each other, hoping for somebody to make a pass, somebody to complete a play, somebody to finish a chance. And they're not even creating those chances. Very limited team right now. When a, when a team's looking around for something, mm -hmm. Usually where you end up, if it's not one of the players, is the manager. And I'm not so sure that this manager right now has, can get in the ears of these players and, and get them going because they look rudderless. At the end of the day, for me, that's the, that's the coach's job. He has to get them going. Uh, let's bring in Gab Marcotti to the conversation. Gab is struggling with uh, man flu at the moment, so we will be <laughs> gentle uh, with you, Gab. Uh, what's wrong with Chelsea? I mean, I think the absences play a big part. Uh, I think Cesc Fabregas is a guy who this season, uh, in Conte's view, he was going to be sort of the, the, the playmaker in midfield, and that's why, why we saw the lineup with, uh, with Hazard and, and, and Morata up front. Um, so then Morata goes, gets himself suspended, and then he has the back problem. No Fabregas. I think this team becomes predictable. His idea was to counter that with the three uh, sort of lightweight, free-moving Pedro, Willian, and Hazard up front, but then... William gets hurt, Barkley comes in, and as I think Stevie mentioned, looks as if he'd never met these guys before, which he ha probably hadn't. And, um, you know, and, and that's it for Chelsea uh, uh, against an Arsenal side, who I thought definitely got stronger as the game went on. We've all done it, boys, haven't we? Mm. Well, maybe, maybe some of us more than others. That's what you've got to say. <laughs> you, you've sent a text, and then you think, actually, I would like to retract that. <laughs> okay. I, I, didn't, I didn't really want to press the send button there. Uh -huh. How much is Conte regretting sending that text to Diego Costa. Saying thank you and goodbye. Hindsight's a wonderful thing, but let's face it, you know, they needed a Diego Costa this season. Yeah, I, I, I think sometimes, we don't know the inner workings, and we don't know what, what exactly happened, but what we do know is that in Diego Costa, you have a guy that you know exactly what you're going to get from him. The truth is that when you look at Chelsea players right now, a lot of them, you don't know what you're going to get. With Diego Costa, you know that he was going to run. You know that he was going to hold the play. You know he was going to score goals. And then you take this, 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 the baggage that comes with him because you understand that it's part of his personality, it's part of what he is, it's part of what makes him the player he is. You, Antonio Conte, there are better ways to deal with players. And sending a text to tell him thanks but no thanks, that was never the answer. We said it then, we'll say it now. And Chelsea right now need a lot of that personality. They're missing it. Is it too simplistic to say? No, no, I think it's, I don't think it's, I think it's obvious, you know, when, when, when they won the league with Costa and Hazard with that combination play, particularly those two, and then at the start of the season, Maratta and Hazard looked as though they had that little combination as well, but that's all disappeared, and then when you, when you have no Maratta, you have nobody, you know, a front three is all about a focal point, mm. and then the other two are playing off them. When Maratta's not around, and even recently Maratta hasn't been at his best, then there's just none of that. It means that you've got Hazard picking the ball up in the halfway line and he has to run all the way and score. And that's the only way it seems that they're going to score a goal. It seems like it's been no secret, as it, Gab, that Chelsea want a striker. Edin Dzeko, very much their man. And apparently a deal done when it comes to the two clubs agreeing a fee. But Edin Dzeko is the one that they need to persuade to move. He wants a longer contract, we're hearing. And he scored and started for Roma tonight. What do we read into this soap opera? 
Well, I'm not 100% um, sure about the fact that, that the deal is actually finalized between the two clubs. Uh, my understanding is that, is that it's close. But uh, the difficulty with, with, with Dzeko is that uh, he's on a very good wage at Roma, something like 160 grand a week, uh, and he has a contract through 2020. Now, Ed Dzeko turns 32 years old uh, in March. And from Chelsea's perspective, they're reluctant to commit to a long-term contract. My understanding is he'd like something through 2021. Um, you know, and Chelsea's saying, well, hang on a minute. You already make a great big whack of money. You're going to want a raise mm. uh, to come here. Uh, and the fact of the matter is, should we commit to a big man when maybe this manager won't be around next season? Somebody else might come in and say, no, you know what? I don't want Dzeko. I want, I want somebody else. So I think... That's a difficulty here. I, I think Je Chelsea would take Jekyll, but they'd really want to take him on their terms, something that, that allows them more flexibility. Whereas from Roma's perspective, they started him because they need the points. Uh, it's as simple as that. Uh, they're under financial, uh, financial fair play settlement agreement with UEFA. They have certain financial targets to hit. And uh, shifting Jekyll, getting his wages off the bill, and getting a fee back would go, would go a long way towards that. Makes sense. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Adding Jacko to Chelsea. Hundred percent. If he plays, then then he might be, be the spark. Uh, and if he doesn't play, then he's going to be on Murata. That might make him pull his socks up. So uh, uh, listen, if it's going to cost the money that they've got, I think they need to just do it and get it done. So Chelsea out of the League Cup. The final is set. It will of course be Manchester City against Arsenal. The SBI has got City as favourites at sixty-six percent to go on and win the cup. And just a reminder, you can see that final live on ESPN3. That's on Sunday, February 25th.